the knee. The knee is the largest joint in the body and a vulnerable one as it's at the mercy of what happens at the joints above and below, meaning the hip and ankle joints. Ideally, the center of the knee is aligned with the center of the hip through the center of the ankle. Having pronated or hyperextended knees will negatively influence how the weight goes through the knees. The bones that make up the knee are the femur, the tibia, and the patella, also known as the kneecap. The femur is the long bone and its rounded lower edges are the medial and lateral condyles that rest on the top of the tibia, which is commonly called the shin bone. While the tibia is shaped in a concave way and the condyles of the femur are shaped convexly, it's easy to see that the ligaments and muscles are going to have to have an important role in the stability of this joint. It is not like the ball and socket joint of the hip, which has much more structural security. To finish identifying the bony aspects of the knee, on the tibia, you'll see the bony bump just below the knee, which is called the tibial tubercle, or the tibial tuberosity. The fibula is the smaller bone that's on the outside of the lower leg, but isn't considered part of the knee joint. The knee is a modified hinge joint. Its primary movement is flexion and extension, or bending and straightening. But when the knee is bent, there is potential for internal and external rotation, which is why it's called a modified hinge joint. The rotation that can happen when the knee is bent is why young dancers should never get into first position by bending their knees, planting their feet, usually with more turnout than they actually have at the hip, and then straightening their knees. That creates quite a twist at the knee that some teachers affectionately called screwing the knee. Not a good habit to get into. You can see how the knee and feet are not lined up in this first position demi plie. The stability of the knee comes from the ligaments and muscles that cross it. Let's start with the ligaments. There are ligaments that attach on the sides of the knee joint. They are the lateral collateral ligament and the medial collateral ligament. Aren't they fun to say? These ligaments connect the tibia to the femur and are tautest when the knee is extended. The medial collateral ligament is more often injured. A type of dance movement that puts undue strain on the medial collateral ligament would be doing a plie where the knee falls inside of the foot. Working your turnout correctly at the hips instead of overturning out the feet is essential for preventing knee injuries. The anterior cruciate ligament, commonly known as the ACL, and the posterior cruciate ligament, or PCL, cross each other through the middle of the knee joint. The ACL runs from the front of the tibia up and back to the back part of the lateral femoral condyle and keeps the tibia from moving forward. The posterior cruciate ligament runs from the back of the tibia up to the front of the femoral condyle and keeps the tibia from sliding backwards. It is more common to injure the ACL and that is a big injury that has a long rehabilitation period if surgery is needed. There is important cartilage at the knee, and that is the lateral and medial meniscus. The top of the tibia is rather flat, and these meniscus are crescent-shaped and form the sides of the bowl that the rounded femoral condyles rest in. They help to center the femur, provide some shock absorption, and with other cartilage, help the femur move smoothly. Next, let's look at the two primary muscle groups at the knee, starting with the quadriceps, and then we'll talk about the hamstrings, which flex the knee. As outlined in the femoral joint unit, there are four muscles that make up the quadriceps. When the quads concentrically contract, they flex the hip and straighten the knee. What we didn't talk about in the earlier chapter was how the kneecap, or patella, is encased in the lower tendon of the quadriceps. It rides in the groove of the femoral condyles. You need an even pull from the quadriceps muscles in order to keep the patella evenly in the groove. Tightness in the iliotibial band, 
which we learned about in the last unit, will pull the kneecap to one side. Imbalance between the lateral and medial quads, or the vastus lateralis and medialis, will also put an uneven pull on the patella. The shape of the patella can influence its motion, as well as always pulling up the knees. We really need to keep our knees in good alignment in order to keep them healthy. Let's talk some more about pulling up the knees. We know that good muscle tone means a muscle has balance between its shortening and lengthening, or as it's called, contracting and releasing. We don't want to have the knees constantly lifted or pulled up because that creates muscle bulk, or thunder thighs as we affectionately called them when I was dancing. Here's a little test to try on yourself and your students. Stand facing a mirror. You're going to be watching the movement of the knees. Try pulling up the knees without locking back and then release them and do it again. Is it easy to do? I'm always surprised by how many dancers have trained their kneecaps and their quads to always be engaged in the standing alignment. And I wonder if it contributes to the very common pattern of overly tight hip flexors. If you have trouble lifting and dropping your kneecap in standing, try doing it sitting down on the floor. Make sure you don't hyperextend. You should be able to lift and lower the patella without locking your knees back. Moving to the back of the 